Hey guys, welcome to a video that explores the MBTI of the Atlantis the Lost Empire 2001 Disney film. It's about a linguist who leads a ragtag group of explorers on an expedition to find the lost city of Atlantis. Let's start with Milo James Thatch. Um, I think he's INTP, like no doubt. I think that a lot of people online, the consensus is definitely INTP. He's it's just like a mole person in a basement and he has like these big, huge ideas that he's trying to put out he ends up having to problem solve a lot um i think he definitely leads with introverted thinking i think that his extroverted intuition also comes into play with just like that social awkwardness he has with everyone around him and just kind of being not used to the bigger world outside of his little like cave basically and once he's confronted with all this real life conflict i think that that's when his ideas are suddenly have to be put externalized and he has to think about ways to get himself out of these big situations and he does it you know with his puzzle solving brain I think definitely no doubt INTP for sure um Kita Kita Gakesh Kita Nidak yeah we're just gonna call her Kita like in the film um I've seen like INFJ for her and I've seen ENTP and even ESTP but like honestly I think she's an ENFJ she's really? she's not like afraid to like immediately be confident and comfortable around people I think that an INFJ wouldn't be like <laughs> like she just grabs you know Milo very just easily. physically a very like assertive person and she's easy to like jump into like any situation she's super expressive I think an INFJ would be more reserved I don't think that an INFJ would like you know be so physically like like grabby and like in Milo's space which you know challenges his character which is great um but yeah I think she leads with extroverted feeling she's idealistic she's, she's blunt she's really confident um she cares about her people so i'm leaning towards enfj well, yeah. and then the antagonist commander lyle tiberius rourke i definitely think he's entj i can totally see the argument for estj but i think he just has like that smooth charisma that entjs have where he's he has like introverted in intuition where he's trying to like manipulate the king um he's got kind of like that two-faced like smoothness to him whereas I think an ESTJ is a bit more boisterous and like less conniving I think that uh Rourke is more calculating he thinks he's three steps ahead I think that one of the characters says that at one point so I think that kind of applies to his ENTJ um persona I actually really like that uh the protagonist in INTP is up against an ant antagonist ENTJ um, because they're, you know, like an MBTI, they're good matches for each other. So I think that's kind of a cool contrast about, uh, an INTP and an ENTJ, like confronted against each other. Um, and then we move on to Lieutenant Helga Katrina Sinclair. Um, I think she's an ISTJ. I've seen the argument for ISTP and I can, I can see that, but I think she actually responds uh, really well to order and she gives order her character is really about like preserving order um you know and she's like ordering milo around uh when he first meets whitmore and she's taking orders on the ship and she's giving orders to the crew i think she's you know order is kind of like the personification of her character i think audrey ramirez is estp for sure i think that that's a pretty easy um, typing. I think, you know, she's a mechanic. She's quick to action. She's a really fast problem solver. She doesn't hesitate to, uh, lock down that one part of the ship when there's still men trying to get out. Um, and I think that's like an ESTP move <laughs> where she's just like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think that, uh, like no hesitation she jumps into action. Um, yeah, and then uh, Vinny Santorini, I think, is 100% an ISTP. I think that his, it's, you know, stereotypically MBTI with, like, the mechanic thing and blowing stuff up and being good with tools and just kind of having a very small emotional range, um, but having, you know, a very, like, strong proclivity for 
just being an arsonist basically um but yeah i i love his character i think everyone does um and then i think joshua is sweet as esfj he leads with extroverted feeling he's happy like upbeat dude another kind of like easy typing pretty like there's not like a ton to his character but like i think he's like likable and like kind of just nice until they betray everyone but even then like he's the first person to uh you know, um, reverse that betrayal and help out the king when he's, uh, injured by Rourke. Um, yeah, so definitely leads with, uh, extroverted feeling. And then, uh, Gaten Mol Molière, I, I've uh, seen people type him as ISTP, but, like, he just seems ESFP to me, because he just, like, easily hits on Kida, and, like, I don't know if an ISTP would boldly just, like, ask someone to sleep with them in that way um and he just lives in the moment with like his emotions he just cares about digging I don't know maybe this is stereotypical as well but that's like a pretty physical sensory activity and maybe he's a really like obsessive ENFP but like I don't know I think he just kind of like lives in the moment and living in the moment for him is dirt for whatever reason um but yeah no he's a fun character and Wilhelmina Packard I totally, I think she's ISTP, I could maybe see the argument for ISTJ as well, but, um, she's just degaff, she's just, she's just over it, she doesn't care, she's just like, all right, whatever happens, happens, she's kind of the epitome of that, um, yeah, another good character, all these characters, also the names of these characters, like, they're so good, um, yeah, and then there's Jebediah Allardyce Cookie Farnsworth, or Cookie, and I've seen him typed as ENFP. I think I would agree with that. He's just like eccentric and a feeler and bombastic and he hates lettuce and I don't know any ENFPs that like lettuce. So that's the argument I have going for that. And then, um, yeah, I think the king, his name is Kashekam Nadak, probably. I don't know. But anyway, he's pretty typed unanimously as INFJ and I would agree with that. I think he's Um, Yeah, maybe he's ISFJ, because I was going to say, like, maybe he's, like, kind of stuck in his ways, where, like, he doesn't want to change the tradition, so, or he's just a traumatized INFJ, where he lost his wife, and, you know, his whole, like, he feels responsible for his people and culture, and, like, trying to protect them, definitely protector vibes, so, yeah, I get the INFJ argument as well, Um, but, yeah, I... I could see INFJ. I could I could kind of see ISFJ too, maybe. Um, just from the the unwillingness to try something new. Um, not that it I mean, I'm gonna I'm speaking from like ISFJ from like the introverted sensing where they're gonna trust what works, but um or you know, rely on the past to like make their decisions and his whole character is about, you know, kind of being stuck in the past and being afraid to, you know, even entertain the possibility of uh you know, he's just trying to preserve, like, what he knows, and it, what he, it's, it's destroying their, you know, culture and people, so yeah, but I don't know, maybe INFJ, either way, you know, poor dude, <laughs> um, okay, and then Preston B. Whitmore, ENTP, I, I totally would, like, agree with that, um, consensus online as well, he's eccentric, he's kind of just, like, two steps ahead of Milo with, um, planning everything, and, yeah, I think, I think he's an ENTP, um, yeah, and then I think that's it, um, if you haven't listened to James Newton Howard's score for this film, it is one of the best scores, like, ever listened to it on Spotify or whatever, it is, like, it's so low in the background, too, of the film, but if you actually listen to it, like, in speakers, like, on its own, it's just, like, this gorgeous, gorgeous, um, score, so anyway, yeah, that's Atlantis, and let me know what you guys think, and I will see you in the next one.